Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Nashville Stars franchise. Man, we are doing well. I keep saying that every episode, but man, it's incredible to be in year number five now and really rebuild in the first three, win the World Series in year four, and see where we're at now. It's incredible. The pitching has really been the difference in this series from my past MLB The Show series. You can just see Bradley McDowell, we just acquired him. He's looking like rookie of the year, the best rookie of the year that we've had in this series so far. We've already won three of them, and it's incredible to see what our pitching has done in this series. This is now our third straight year being top three in ERA. It's just been incredible. And guys like this, Pablo Moya, who moved up when he was only just 66 overall. And look at him. I mean, it was an all-star last year. He's headed there again probably this year. He had 49 saves. Only one blown save the entire year last year. He's got half of that this year, and he's on track to probably beat that. So here we are versus the Nationals here before the all-star break. A little, a little boost to Bradley McDougal's resume going into all-star break you never know he could make it as a rookie so we want to try and get him a win today going up against the nationals who are in a rebuilding state they signed juan soto to a long-term deal but they are going to build around him but they definitely need a couple of other players there is brady house who they also are building building around hitting in that number two spot in the lineup next to soto those two guys are the cornerstone pieces of the Nationals. Here he gets a high pitch from McDougal. This one will be a fly out to short left field. Willie Adames does run that down. Adames was off to a slow start this year, but now he's starting to figure it out going into all-star break as that brings Juan Soto to the plate. Ground ball to first, and it's tough to get hits off of McDougal. Ground ball to Kerry Doss, the former rookie of the year. Is now it's 0 0 as the Nashville Stars come to the plate now. And here is Enrique Bradfield, the other rookie. We could possibly have the top two rookies in the AL in McDougal and Enrique Bradfield Jr. And he is just hitting the ball extremely well in that leadoff spot and really hasn't dipped in production going from the minors to the majors. I think that's been an issue we've seen with a lot of our prospects. And Enrique Bradfield, it's not phasing him at all. The competition level is not making him afraid to hit MLB fit pitching at all. KFC, who's having a great year this year. Finally, after a few years in the minors, he's finally figured out his bat. But this time, grounds back out to the pitcher. That brings up Willie Adames hitting in that four spot. We did give Rafael Devers the day off today. That's why no Devers up in that three spot. As that drives in the first run of the game, bringing up DTW, ground ball two, short, and House with a good throw over to first, but we do get the first run of the day on the board. On to the bottom of the second inning. This is Jimmy Sandoval at the plate now, hitting 247 on the year, and he gets plunked on the back. That one will load up the bases for the top of the lineup here. Enrique Bradfield comes up to the plate again, one for one today. He gets a low pitch, and that one is out of the zone, but it gets through the infield. It's a base hit. It will score one. We will hold up the runner at third. And now it's 2-0 here with bases loaded, one out. That brings up Kerry Doss to the plate. He gets a hanger and hits this one deep to left field. This one will stay in the ballpark. It will be foul, actually, but we will tag up the runner from third, and it will be 3 to nothing. Kurt Zambrano will score. He is the slowest guy on our team with 19 speed. But he ends up scoring on that deep fly ball. KFC to the plate now with men on first and second here. Two outs. A long throw from House. Will get him. And that's why you build around a guy like that. An excellent defensive play. As we move on to the fourth inning now. Bases loaded again. Another bases loaded situation. This is a deep fly ball to left field again. Same spot as before. And it will tag the runner up. And now it's a 7-3 ball game as Anthony DiSclefani is in for relief and he gives up a fly ball, sacrifice fly right there. 
Di Sclafani still on the mound here in the sixth inning. That's going to bring up Kurt Zambrano. Another bases loaded situation. Let's see if we can score on this one. The throw home will be up the line, and it will score Adames from third. A lot of bases loaded situations here in this game as we move on to the bottom of the seventh inning. KFC at the plate now with a four-run lead, and he gets a hold of one. Deep to left center, it's gone. Maybe KFC is putting on a little bit of an all-star campaign before the all-star break. That one was crushed. Hitting in that three spot in place of Devers, and he gets a hold of that pitch. And wow, that one traveled a long way. 442 to left center field. As this hitting continues here in the bottom of the seventh, here is Dom Thompson Williams at the plate. He hits one well to right field. This one gets all the way to the warning track. Will bounce off of the wall. It will score one. The throw to third, and Dom Thompson Williams has a triple here, and that will cap off this game. Dom Thompson Williams, who's been a tremendous player in this series, and he comes through with a big RBI triple propelling us to a win in this one. As that brings up Buddha Bless, maybe to add on a little bit more insurance. And he turns on one inside. That one gets down in right field. 13 to 6. The offense carries us today. Bradley McDougal gets his 11th win on the season. And we get the dub today. Bradley McDougal, actually maybe one of his worst outings. He gives up four earned. Funny to say that. One of his worst outings of the year. As we do end up moving into the All-Star break. Actually on a pretty good note. We actually win a couple of games right before All-Star break. And now we give our guys a much-deserved few days off here going into the All-Star game. But one guy who won't get a break is Rafael Devers. Devers has been tremendous for us in this series since we acquired him via free agency two seasons ago, and he's done nothing but tremendous things. He enters the home run derby as the underdog, the four seed really in this entire thing, goes up against Mike Trout, who is the leader for MVP in the AL so far this year, and he defeats him in round number one. In round two, he faces Matt Olson. Endeavors has a lesser of a round, but still hits the ball great. You see, he starts to get into a groove, and he just, at that point, couldn't miss the pitch. I mean, every single ball was pretty much a home run. Some were foul, but he ends up with 10 home runs in this second round. And that one actually is enough to defeat Matt Olson, who only had nine. And then he goes into the final round, needing 10 home runs to win versus Nick Castellanos, who hit nine in the final round. And he is just crushing the ball at this point. He does miss the homer on homer number seven, but re readjusts his swing a little bit. Hits three straight, and with 20 seconds to go, he hits a bomb deep to right field. That's gone. Devers wins the home run derby. Maybe this will propel his MVP race. And this guy has been so good for us. We signed him to a big contract, the biggest contract we've ever given out. Nobody has even come close to that contract, to be honest with you. And I don't think anybody will. We end up winning the home run derby with Devers. And we move on to the all-star game. Devers will make the starting lineup as the DH. He will be a starter, and Jorge Alfaro will start at catcher for the NL. So congratulations to Alfaro. Signs the new deal. He's done tremendous things for us. He makes the all-star game. But who else makes it for the stars? Bradley McDougal, the rookie. 291 ERA, 104 whip, 16 quality starts. In 20 total starts. I mean, if there wasn't a better season than anybody's had at pitching this season, this in this series, a starter has had. I mean, Bradley McDougal was definitely topping the year that Troy Quincy had a couple of years ago. 
Pablo Moya makes it for the second straight year. Is this really a surprise? 29 saves, one blown so far. I think last year at the uh, at the All-Star break, he had zero blown saves, about the same amount of saves as well, and he has just been tremendous. A surprise All-Star on the Stars is TJ Antone. We acquired him at the trade at the I mean in the offseason last year, and look what he's done. Just putting up career numbers, and he makes it. I'm surprised at that, but hey, I'll take it. So three All-Stars so far. Make that four with Devers. 299, 384 on base percentage, 975 OPS. That matches our uh, franchise high of All-Stars right here. But how about number five? Kendrick Franklin Cole. He makes the all-star game. I guess the fans really love the underdog story, a guy that really struggled at the MLB level. His rookie year, 232. Year after that, 167. Year after that, 240. I thought we were going to be on the verge of trading him. But then now he bounces back with a huge year, and he will come off the bench as a left fielder. So in the all-star game, here is Rafael Devers at the plate, and he flies out to right field. That one will actually cap off a 0 for 3 day for Devers. As we take a look at the rookie, Bradley McDougal in the all-star game. He faces, obviously, a bunch of all-stars. Freddie Freeman grounds out to first base, bringing up Juan Soto, who he just got done facing. He has his number, ground ball to first. Two outs. That's going to bring up. Probably the MVP in the NL. Fernando Tatis is having an amazing year. He's got 30 home runs hitting over 1,000 OPS, but 86, 86 RBIs at the All-Star break. I mean, the guy is just absolutely hitting the ball well. But how about McDougal getting him to swing and miss at that high fastball? Strike three. McDougal is so good. We could easily have the two best pitchers in baseball right now with McDougal and Pablo Moya. Kendrick Franklin Cole comes in to pinch hit here in the bottom of the seventh inning for his only at-bat of the game, facing A.J. McKnight, one of our subscriber prospects who is at the MLB level and an all-star now, but he does ground out to second base, and KFC cannot get a hit in his first ever all-star game. In comes Pablo Moya for the save now, up 9-7 for the AL, and he gets a ground ball to first. Kyle Schwarber will ground out as that brings up the next hitter now with one out. A 3-2 pitch. Pablo Moya gets the grounder to short. Long throw, but an easy one. No speed going to first. Two outs. Pablo Moya, one of the fan favorites in the MLB now. That brings up Brandon Lowe, who hits one well to right center. But that one is caught by the second-time All-Star Max Clark, and we will win it. 9-7 to seven here for the AL. Pablo Moya shuts it down. What's new, to be honest with you? And Bradley McDougal gets the win in the All-Star game. So our team, just a whole lot of storylines in this series. McDougal, probably going to get Rookie of the Year. I mean, it, a miracle would have to happen for him not to get it. So we continue after the All-Star break. We are... Doing very, very well, but competing with the Yankees who are in first place right now in the AL East. And here we are in a 9-8 game, and Kerry Doss having a big game today, 4-4 four for four at that point. Ground ball back to the pitcher. He needs a triple to hit for the cycle, but now we are up 12-8 to eight in this one. He checks swings at an outside slider. And obviously he went around, but we do end up with the victory in this game. 12 to 8, 19 hits. I mean, we have a lot of games like this where we have just a ton of hits and nothing short of that in that game. We move on to the third game in this uh, three-game series. We did split. We won the first, lost the second, and now here is Joel Piomps in the ninth inning. Looking to shut it down, facing Brian Reynolds, who has a chance to walk it off here. Down 3 nothing in this count, 3-0 in this count, and Joel Pioms comes all the way back with three straight fastballs and gets him to strike out here, and we are headed to extras. 
On to the extra frames here. Enrique Bradfield on first base, bringing up Kerry Doss here with no outs. And that one will be a swing and miss. Kerry Doss went fishing for that one low. That brings up Rafael Devers. It looks like Bradfield's on the move, and he had an excellent jump on that. The throw was not even close. His 22nd stolen base of the year as Devers now has an opportunity to bring in a run. But the manager probably smartly walks Devers to set up a double play situation here as that brings up Dom Thompson-Williams, who's kind of having a down year this year, but still a guy that is dependable here in that four spot in the lineup. He's probably not going to be moving from that spot. But that brings up Kendrick Franklin Cole on deck. We'll see if Dom Thompson-Williams can get aboard here. A 3-1 pitch here with one out. He gets one over the middle of the plate. Hit well to right field. It sneaks over the wall. It's a home run on a line drive. His 13th home run of the year. DTW comes through again. And these are the series we have to win. And we have actually been beating the Yankees pretty well this year. They've just been beating up on everybody else as we are competing for first place, but a big-time home run right there. Pablo Moya comes into a situation here with bases loaded with no outs here in the bottom of the 10th. Here is Nick Solak at the plate. A little uh, tapper in front of the plate will be stepped on by Kurt Zambrano for the first out of the inning. That brings up Candelario to the plate now. This is a chopper to short. This could end it. On to second. On to first. And it will be a double play. Pablo Moya could be the best relief pitcher, I guess, closer in baseball. And he shuts it down again. It's crazy to come into a situation with bases loaded, no outs, and just absolutely shut it down that's the type of pitcher that Pablo Moya is. Well, let's check him out in action again. This time versus the Kansas City Royals, one of the worst hitting teams in the MLB. But in a 5-4 to four game, he can shut it down. The first batter he faces will be a bunt. A bunt can't even get down cleanly versus Pablo Moya. Just incredible one out. Nick Prado to the plate now in that four spot. He hits one well to left side. Ground ball to third, and it will be almost a double play. Devers actually with a great throw to second right there after the backhand, and now with two outs. Ground ball to third, and another save by Pablo Moya. Can anybody hit him cleanly? I don't think so. A 5-4 victory here versus the Kansas City Royals. Pablo Moya would save number 32 on the season. KFC gets player of the game today, 2-4 for four with the home run. And we get the victory. As we cap off our month of June, actually kind of up and down, we uh, end up splitting uh, with the uh, – actually, we ended up – yeah, we did end up, end up splitting with the Kansas City Royals. We won that 2-3 of three series versus the Yankees, but then, you know, we're not – you know, winning games consistently here. We win a couple, lose a couple. And I think we just need a boost to our rotation here in that five spot. I've been talking about talking about it. Excuse me. Damian Houston in that fifth spot. I just don't think it's working. And I tried Adrian Hauser there. I don't think that's working either. So I think the solution is to bring up our number one pick in this entire series. Steven Brennan, he's had four years of development, four years, and he's still only 21 years old, and he's finally, and I mean finally, having a good season in AAA. A 289 ERA, a 129 whip. He's got 13 quality starts and 20 starts. I think that's good enough for me. He's going to get moved up, and he will start here July 31st at the trade deadline I plan on making some sort of trade here I think that you know looking at what we have in the outfield I'm not 100% happy with Taylor Trammell is a good hitter in spots but throughout the regular season he's proven not to be one in the playoffs yes but in the regular season no Dom Thompson Williams is struggling a bit I'm not too worried about him because I know he will come around we could always move up Nico Latonia, but he is a younger player who doesn't have any MLB experience. And I want a guy who 
maybe has a little bit of MLB experience, but maybe a younger player also that we can kind of build around in the outfield. Who knows? So next episode will be the trade deadline and Steven Brennan's MLB debut. I've been waiting a long time for this episode and we will finally see what the young kids got. I can't wait. He's finally ready. You don't want to miss it. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money, I got time to get it Target on me, so my car's a tenny Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it Bible in a dash and the stick is with it And I hit the 4-5 on the wet side But I'm from the east side, this how we slide This how we ride, yeah, yeah, this how we ride